Uh, let me share my screen now. I hope you can see my tab, Chrome tab. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we have this beautiful AI series CI pipeline, which which is basically built on uh, which is based on Tekton pipelines and OpenShift pipelines. Uh, so uh, there is a new feature like which I was working on, and it's still in work, work in progress. It's basically to use a configuration uh, file as such. Uh, to basically give what preference would you have or what do you need in the, uh, from the CI. And so that becomes customizable and uh, no one is no one else has to like explain, they can explicitly state what is required. And this small file could be present or this configuration file could be put, put into the root of the directory and the CI would just pick this up process it through and based upon uh, the customization provided here, it would, brought, it would start the pipelines which are required or not. So it is nothing different from uh, a configuration file which other CI uses, like there's a Zool, there's a Zool.yaml, something like that. So this is pretty similar to it. Uh, so here's an example. So project name, uh, all, all this is like uh, still, like uh, not not decided, but still experimenting with. It. So if you have feedback, please do let me know. Uh, but uh, like for example, the project name, I can uh, yeah, so to see I can pick the project name from the name of the uh, repository. But if someone wants to customize that, they don't want to put the same name. Uh, they can change this. Uh, this could be used for probably for the releases and for other additional stuff but still uh, figuring that out. Checks are, which checks do you want to run? As of now, the dot koala, we have deprecated it, but uh, so for, this is just for examples. Point of view, like you can say, uh, I want a dot koala pytest and pre-commits and build checks to run. Uh, this dot custom build is a new check, which it's not a check, it's more like a feature, uh, which I'll be explaining uh, with an example. And this is a release. Uh, so if you want the CI to release the Python module to PyPI, you can explicitly state here. Uh, as of now, we were trying to check, but based upon if if an application is able to be uh, upload, like published on PyPI via our CI, we used to do that. But if someone doesn't want, if a user doesn't want uh, the CI to publish the, publish the project to PyPI, even though it can be, uh, they can explicitly remove this pa this parameter, and the CI wouldn't function on it. Uh, so this is just a uh, few of the configuration which you can do. Apart from this, there's a bit information. So as you, you as as uh, as the CI builds and pushes the image uh, of an application on a tag release, uh, so this is the information it looks for. So so base images, as you know, uh, we have uh, different, we are supporting different build strategies. There is Docker file, uh, we are supporting Docker, S2I, and uh, also Fedora containers. So what, so so here you can state which kind of, which kind of uh, build strategy do you wanna follow? This is, this this would be something similar to the OpenShift build config, right? So you state that you wanna build via Docker file. So, uh, uh, later on, there would be also an option to add a context path because if you don't want, uh, if you're not putting Docker file in your root directory and if you are uh, naming it as Dockerfile.x something, then you can put that in your context file, a uh, context path. Uh, apart from that, registries right now because we we want to support uh, like multiple rep uh, rep registries, but we want to st still promote the uh, query to use people to the the user to use query. Uh, we will be mostly doing it uh, all the experiments where uh, so you can state your registry uh, organization and project name uh, whatever it is uh, so it could be totally different from the project which you have and uh, the project name which you have it on Quay. so I'll show that as an example as well uh, so this is an important configuration which is required uh, so right now if uh, all our dot station uh, projects uh, are pushed to dot station which is on Quay, and 
there we have a build secret which is which we use to which we use which, which the CI uses to push and it's uh, and it, it would use that and we have this information. Suppose the CI is configured for any other organization and they have some other organization on Quay, uh, we would require the secrets or the CI would require the secrets to push. So they can uh, send the, uh, the we can in, insert this uh, secrets and they can just put like uh, the name of that uh, credentials. And this is something which uh, which needs to be decided and uh, still doing some experiments if we can not have include this or something like that. Oh, so this was just to describe the what the configuration file was. Let me show you example, then maybe I can show you how the pipeline actually works. So first example would be for the uh, builds. So let me show you this SI clock. Uh, why I chose this project was, so firstly, we are trying to first build a base image. So this image is, uh, uh, we, we are just building a base image and then we'll use this base image to build this whole application via source to match. So once uh, this is already, uh, this image has already been pushed to Quay, right? So the output image is near, yeah, we would use that output image to build the whole project. So if you would, let's just check the configuration file. So in the configuration file, you can state, so uh, as you can see, I have removed the release because we don't need the release here. We don't need the custom builds here. So I've removed all those things. But like for this project, the base image is different than the usual. The, uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, the, uh, the AI, sorry, the uh, Red, uh, Red Hat's UBI 8 image. It's a custom image which is need to be used. So we have provided that. Uh, we are using the source and this and we are using a different registry name. Uh, once this is done, what the only thing which uh, applicant, once you have uh, present, which once this app file is present in your repository, the only thing you need to do is a normal workflow, you'd make a release. So uh, I've already made a release, so let me just re trigger that. And once I did that, hmm, a new pipeline has begun, and let's just see what happens. I would show you there is already a pipeline already run. I just want to see, show you what happens here. So it checks, it first gathers all the knowledge, and once it's done, it's, it's hard to, you know, it would do some checks of which pipelines to run. And once it's completed, it would start the tag release. So so at the background, what's happening is these pipelines are uh, working on OpenShift. So it's picking up resources, uh, generating all the containers and starting the containers. So it started the container. It picked the newest tag, 0.1.2, which was released. Uh, and it, it noticed that you are building via source to image. So it is considering whatever information is present in that uh, configuration file. So here the build is using the base image, which is s 2 dot Fedora 32, Python 3.8 clock. Uh, the default one uh, would be always S2I to by 8. Uh, so if you want to configure that, you can put that. Uh, this build is going to fail because of some discrepancies in our web lock. And, but uh, that's a different point. I just wanted to show you that this is how you can configure and work through it. Um, so this was the first example what I want to show. And now come to the next feature, it's a custom build. Suppose you have an application where you want to build it for multiple, so you want to build it uh, for, uh, you want to build multiple images through it. So one such application were, uh, was solvers from ThoughtStation. So we wanted to build multiple solver images. So how does, how can a CI pipeline work on this? Because there are multiple Docker files, we, uh, we need we need to have a custom pipeline so that pipeline can run another pipeline which can run multiple tasks or else you it would always run all these things in one single task which would fail which would result in failure of a pipeline so we developed a, a custom pipeline which would pick up each docker file like uh, which is stated in 
in our repository and you can definitely get the context file also in the configuration file i'll just show you in a second so here is a docker file you have stated uh your requirements for this image and what you need to do is two things one is adding the configuration file and including that this is a custom web this would specify to that ci that this is a custom web and all the rest are for your pull requests and all that so it will run those checks or not but this one is basically saying that for this repository i just want to run my custom bits i don't want the actual normal bits of ci so what would ci do is rather than running the pipelines which are present in the system it will look for a pipeline in your application so in your application you can add your custom pipeline so in the custom pipeline uh, there are there would be uh, there would be examples for this where you can pick those and edit this but here just you are just stating like each task for uh, e uh, each uh, image you are just saying okay i want to build fedora 32 uh, uh, it has uh, it, i want it's it's reply, its name in the query is this and the context path is here and exactly the same you can replicate how many builds you want to do so if you want to do x number of builds you can just add keep on adding to this task and you, uh, the ci would pick it up so let me trigger this as well uh, so i have already released a version 1.1.2 so i'm just re-triggering it and yeah you can see there is a task started so here what the task is doing is the basic similar function it post it's starting to gather some information it checks it's a pi custom pipeline and now it's gonna start this custom pipeline so uh, i'll show you what's the logic behind it is but what happens is first we are trying to create a custom pipeline uh, so what is a pipeline pipeline always consists of a pipeline run then a pipeline and then a task so here we are trying to construct a pipeline run so that it can pick up the pipeline which is present in solvers uh, if it's getting confu confusion, uh, it's creating confusion. I can create. I can. I will show you in uh, more detail form. So it creates a pipeline run, then it starts a pipeline. So if you can see, it points you to custom pipeline. And now this pipeline has started multiple tasks based upon each build. So each build will start build the pro project, build the image, and push it to the registry or the query whichever information you have provided. So this, if you can, if you have noticed, um, if you have missed or noticed, uh, uh, this doesn't require any build information in the configuration file. But this, the, all those details can be put, put into the pipeline. And a similar thing could be done into any of your any of our projects. We can just put a pipeline with additional information and use that. Uh, so this was the demo. Uh, let me just show you what is the logic behind this. So in a pipeline. Uh, like as I said, it runs a task. So this is a task which says tag with. So what it requires is it just requires which version to uh, which uh, tag version to from where it should pick the Docker file and uh, build it. So it needs that information, the repository, the repository, and Docker file. Uh, let me show you more details here. So normally a, a pipeline. Uh, would start and then this is a tag release pipeline so this tag release uh, so this tag release pipeline would look for custom pipeline so in this custom pipeline this is this is what is running and let's check this out and So this custom pipeline is first creating a pipeline run. So pipeline run is required for a pipeline to run. Uh, this is basically a template which says X, Y pipeline you need to run. So, so the only two main important things is you need to name your pipeline custom pipeline. And that's about it. And rest of the things will be taken care of by the, by the CI. The CI would start that and execute the pipeline. So that's about it. You, so there are two features now in AI COE CI where you can use a custom pipeline to uh, build uh, if someone multiple projects. I think this would uh, this would be helpful for many other different projects and the configuration file which you can use in any of the applications. 
Yeah. Uh, I can take any questions if you're any. And I'll, I'll be updating this, everything in AICOE documentation. So uh, if anyone wants to use it, they can use it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Nice. Uh, thanks for that. Um, it, uh, I, I wonder how the uh, OpenShift pipeline people itself um, uh, think about that. Um, because for us, it seems to be pretty natural. We have Solver. That Solver has many different uh, um, Docker files, and we want to create these many Docker files out of one repository. Um, as an alternative, we could have many repositories, one for each solver, which is kind of nonsense somehow. So I wonder how the um, um, OpenShift people uh, think about the uh, custom build pipeline so that we can have these uh, support for multiple uh, Docker files and what they think about that uh, configuration file. Because um, in each and every demo that I see, they are basically never ever leaving their cluster somehow, right? They build all the stuff on the internal registry or push it to the internal registry. Maybe they push it from that namespace to another namespace, but everything is basically happening inside of the cluster. They're not really um, releasing any artifacts like container files to, to upstream query. So um, I think it's worth uh, opening a discussion with them uh, and, and showing what we got and what we do and what they think. Um, don't we even have an Hangouts channel for that stuff, for pipelines? I think so, right? Yes. Yes. So um, feel free to, to talk to these guys and see what's happening. Yeah, definitely. Um, other other uh, comments, questions? Thank nice. you so much. Cool. Thanks.